What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Attic, and welcome to another JavaScript challenge video. And in this video, we'll look for the number sequences. And before we begin, let me just mention that since I have been getting a bunch of great inputs, I have started adding them to the source code. So if you follow the source code link located in the description, you might find some other nifty solutions as well. And effectively, the idea is following where we want to create a function that takes in array as an argument and then looks for sequences. And the sequence that we're looking for is following where the first number matches the third one and middle one is different. So if you take a look at the first example where we have this list of numbers, the sequences are following. So we have 868 eight, and we have 686 six, and then of course 747. Seven. Seven. And function should return a number of three, which of course means that we have three sequences. And the same goes for the second example. And third one returns zero, since we don't have any such sequence here. And we're going to start by creating a function, like always. So I'm going to go with const, and I think I'm going to call this count. And it's going to be an arrow function. It's going to be looking for the argument, and I'll name this argument data. And then since I want to right away see my result, I'll also invoke count and it's going to be sitting in console log. And since we're not returning anything, that's why, of course, we have here undefined. And just like the previous challenges, we'll go the long route first, where we'll do a bunch of console logging. And then eventually we'll take a look at the shorter code example as well. And you know what? In here I'm invoking, but since eventually I'll pass in the data anyway, I might as well go here with first. And as you can see over here, the result should be three. And the idea is following where since we have an array, we might as well right away set up the reduce. So I represent this array, of course, with my parameter of data. So in here, simply I can say return. So I'll right away return from the function data reduce. Since, of course, we have array, we can call this. And then if you remember in a callback function, we have two parameters. We have total, which effectively represents the total that we're going to be returning. And then that individual item, since with reduce, we still iterate over the list. Now, it's also really nifty that as a third argument, we get actually a index. So that's going to be the index of the item in the array. And as far as what I want to return from the reduce, I'm going to start with zero. So I'm just going to assume that there's no sequences in the data. And then let's start by simply console logging item. So of course, in our first array, this is what we should see. And we can also right away double check. And we can take a look at the indexes. Now, there's one big doozy in my current setup. And that is following where I'm not returning my total. So if you remember, with reduce, you always, always, always want to return that total. Otherwise, the functionality is going to go bananas. And the logic is going to be following where we just want to check whether this item, so in this case, of course, the item with the index of zero doesn't match to that of the index of one. And if it matches the one that has the index of two, and the same is going to be for six, where we want to check whether it doesn't match to the next item and matches to one after that. And hopefully you get the gist. I think I'm going to comment out these console logs and I'll simply go with another one. And in here, I'll say item equals. And now, of course, I'm checking whether it matches not to the next one, but one after that. And the way we can check that we can look for entire array. And since we can access the index of the current item, we simply need to add plus two. Why? Well, because the index of the item that is not the next one, but one after that is always going to be plus two. So in here, I just say index and then a plus two. And uh, as you can see, the first one is true, then true, and then false, false, false. And then again, we have the true. And then, of course, I want to check with a next item. And I do that by saying item doesn't match. And of course, in here, I go with index and then only plus one, because again, the next item will always have index plus one. And here, of course, I can see that 
all of them are true. So basically, six is not equal to eight, eight is not equal to six. And hopefully you get the gist. And then of course, if we have the match, then we can add plus one to whatever we're returning. Because in our case, of course, we start with zero. And then if it doesn't match, then we simply return total. So again, I'll comment these ones out, just so our setup is not that busy. And I'm just going to come up with a variable, like I said, we'll shorten this up in a second, where I'll say that if item is equal to data, and then index plus two. And, and of course, now I just want to combine them. And in here, I'm going to say item doesn't match to data, and then index only plus one, then of course, I have the match. So if this is true, awesome, we want to go with plus one. If it's not true, then we simply want to return a total. So let's go with if match. And if that is the case, then we go with return total plus one. If it doesn't match, then of course, we simply return total. And of course, notice the value, I have three. So if I'm going to go with my second array, I should get one. And then if I'm going to go with my third one, of course, you can already see that we're going to get back a zero. And then if we want to shorten this up, well, for starters, I'm going to comment this out. And then we're going to go with new function, call this count again, and then we'll pass in data. And we'll use the fact that by default, of course, arrow functions do the implicit return. So here we say data reduce and the same three arguments in our callback function. And as far as the return, again, we're going to go with zero here. And let's just say total item and then index. And as far as the logic in a callback function, again, since we have a arrow function, we know that there is a implicit return. And here, let's just say total, and then plus, and then we want to set up the parentheses, and just get the logic from the match. So everything starting with this item. So copy and paste, I'll just make sure that my result is correct. And I'll double check with the first one. And then I'll return here because you probably have questions. How does this one work? And since I can see that the value for the first one is three, of course, everything is correct. And probably your question is following you go like, all right, I understand the implicit returns. But don't we return from this one, true or false, since of course, in here, we were checking for that. And the answer is yes. But what's interesting in JavaScript, it will be converted to one or zero. And just to showcase that we can go with simply console log, and then let's say one plus, and let's put up a true. And what you'll notice that if this is true, then of course, we have value of two, because we go with one plus one. And if this is going to be false, then of course, the value will be only one because this is actually turned into zero. And the same goes over here, where I'm always returning total with my implicit return. And at the beginning, of course, it's going to be zero. And then if the condition is true, then of course, we'll go with plus one. If it's not true, then of course, it is going to be zero. And that's how we can set up a function that takes in an array and checks for the sequences.